Uh, so essentially with this with this ridge, what you can think about is, you know, in California, we get our storms off the Pacific. There's a storm track that brings moisture to California. And uh, with this, this area of high pressure, you can think about this like a boulder, putting a boulder into a stream. Uh, that boulder is going to deflect the flow of water. And that's what we've seen with these storm tracks during this uh, during the periods when this ridge has been persistent. Uh, it, it should be noted that these ridges happen all the time in the atmosphere. They happen all the time in the, in the Northeast Pacific. And the question is really how persistent are they? So they're very they're generally very transient features. We get nice uh, warm blue sky conditions here in California when when this ridging is present. And what we've seen during this drought is there there have it, the ridge has not been present for the entire four years. It's not that persistent, but it has been particularly persistent for extended periods of time during this drought. And we've seen low precipitation as a result. And in our work, we've seen going back in the historical record that dry times in California have, in fact, been associated with high uh, geopotential heights, high atmospheric pressures over the Northeast Pacific. OK, so, for instance, uh, the, the late 70s drought in California, w was that associated with a similar type of ridging? Yeah, when we look back, uh, it really, really is a question of time scale. Uh, but when we do look back at look at look at uh, seasons in which there was uh, low precipitation in California, we do find that the atmosphere exhibits this this ridging phenomenon. I think what we're really seeing, you know, in this current drought is the interaction between low precipitation and high temperature. Uh, we're really seeing the role of temperature. You know, in our in our recent work, when we look back at the historical record of California, uh, we see that low precipitation is necessary for drought conditions in California. All the droughts that we identify in the 120 years of, of observed record in California, they all have at least moderately low precipitation, but it's notable that there are many years that have moderately low precipitation that did not produce drought. And what we see is that a low precipitation year that co-occurs with warm conditions is more than twice as likely to produce drought than a low precipitation year that co-occurs with cool conditions. And what we're seeing very clearly in California is long-term warming of California. Uh, we're not seeing real increases in or changes in the probability of low precipitation years, but what we are seeing is very clear increases in, in the likelihood that low precipitation co-occurs with high temperature, increases in the likelihood that when low precipitation uh, does occur that it produces drought, and we're seeing increases in the frequency of, of drought years. Uh, we also find that uh, we had, with very high statistical confidence that uh, the warming of California that has been observed in the record would not have happened without human emissions of greenhouse gases, and critically, that the observed increase in the co-occurrence of low precipitation and, and warm conditions also would not have occurred without uh, human emissions of greenhouse gases. So we have very high statistical confidence that uh, what we're seeing in the historical record in terms of the increasing co-occurrence of low precipitation with, with warm temperatures, that uh, this is consistent with human forcing, is not consistent with uh, a, a world uh, without that human forcing. Okay, so are we seeing uh, globally, are we seeing uh, more droughts uh, in general? Well, uh, you know, this is the globe is a big place, and and uh, you know there are there's a lot of nuance to any individual location. Um, you know, I, I think that in areas where uh, we know that temperature is important for for water availability in terms of um, you know soil moisture, you know evapotranspiration that that uh, you know temperature plays an important role in evapotranspiration and and in uh, therefore in the in the water available in soils. It plays an important role in snowfall, uh, how much precipitation is delivered as snow rather than rain, and it, it plays an important role in um, in snow melt. When, when snow does fall, how quickly does it melt? And so uh, those are first principle physics uh, reasons that we would expect that temperature would, would play a role in water availability in many parts of the world. Certainly in California, uh, you know, we are seeing uh, that played out in the historical record. Uh, we're seeing it this year in this in this current drought, where uh, you know we did have storms uh, that 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 came to California and reached the mountains uh, during this rainy season. Those storms delivered mostly rain rather than snow, and that's reflected in uh, the very little snow that's a, that's available starting this spring. Uh, California is now in a situation where we're starting out with with drought conditions. We have uh, you know, not just record low 
uh, snowpack, but but we've really obliterated the the previous record low. And what that means, because we have a summer dry climate, is that uh, you know it's, it's very difficult to come up with a plausible scenario in which we won't be in a more severe situation uh, at the end of the summer than we are now. Okay, so uh, has has anyone that you know looked at uh, what the possible uh, causes there might be for this ridging to keep forming and, and reforming. Some people have talked about the southwestern Pacific as being kind of the formative area. Some people have talked about, as you know, uh, changes in the Arctic and the uh, extent of Arctic ice. Uh, do you have any particular perspective on that, or is that outside your, your area? Uh, well, so we have, we have a couple projects going on right now to try to understand uh, different possible mechanisms uh, responsible for this uh, triple R condition, uh, and and others have uh, other groups have work that's uh, you know been you know, has been submitted and is available in some cases available uh, in the literature. Uh, so you know we're we're I think that, you know there's community people that are working on it. We have our slice that we're taking, and that's in progress right now. Uh, I think it's you know it's clear that there are teleconnections between um, the ocean and the atmosphere, between the land surface and the atmosphere, uh, and and California certainly is is subject to to many of those. Uh, so you know I, I think there there are interesting questions about what's causing the ridging. I, you know I I haven't seen any argument that the that the ridging is is uh, the primary cause of the low precipitation. I don't think that's controversial. Uh, and, you know, I think it's important to keep in mind that, um, you know, the, that greenhouse gases, you know, they, they don't just force the atmosphere in terms of the radiative balance, they, they affect the ocean as well. And, and um, you know, so what we, what we see in the ocean, you know, we need to do the same kind of detective work, uh, trying to understand, you know, what we, how much of what we see in the ocean is noise, you know, our null hypothesis that everything's noise, you know, we, that's our null hypothesis, but then we, we need to do the same kind of detective work with the ocean. To understand what's noise and what's what's potentially forced by by increasing greenhouse gas concentrations and other atmospheric constituents, because uh, you know the, the ocean's not immune to to that radiative forcing, and we have you know very we have piles of evidence that that show that the ocean responds to to greenhouse forcing, and so I think we you know we have a real burden uh, to understand what you know what if any uh, role uh, the observed global warming is in in influencing the ocean that that we're we're seeing you know, downstream in the atmosphere.